Hey, this is Tom Barber, University of Arkansas System, Division of Agriculture. I'm an extension weed scientist and today I'm at Tiller, Arkansas, evaluating some of our cotton weed control plots. And we're going to talk today about early season cotton weed control and why it's important to have a good program in place and be timely with our applications. But first, uh, I just want to show you a little bit about how we conduct this research and it's very important uh, when we do any kind of on-farm research or, or research anywhere to gauge the kind of weed spectrum that we have. And so in every trial that we do, we include an untreated check, meaning that we don't spray any herbicide on it at all to gauge, to gauge the weed population that we have. And as you can see, I'm standing in one of our untreated checks, very high Palmer amaranth or pigweed pressure. And so that is our number one weed in the state of Arkansas. Uh, when we make any weed control program in cotton or soybean, it revolves around uh, glyphosate resistant and PPO resistant Palmer amaranth. And so very good population of that here in this plot. Also we have grasses, uh, bar, uh, broadleaf signal grass and large crab grass. This is broadleaf signal grass right here. So we have a lot of that out here as well uh, as some morning glories scattered out. And so those are the weeds we're gonna be looking at today, but mostly we're gonna talk about pigweed because it is our number one weed issue in the state of Arkansas. The first herbicide treatment we're going to look at in our early season cotton weed control system is an application of uh, cotteran and caparol, and that's just a, a tank mix of cotteran and caparol at one pint per acre each. And so if we look down through this plot, we can see we got great uh, residual activity of that specific treatment. Uh, we found over the last two or three years that mixing uh, two at planting herbicide residual applications is generally better than one for a broad spectrum weed control of the weed species we have present. We talked about earlier, the pigweed, the grasses, and the uh, morning glory species. And so what we've done in this particular plot, we did cotter and caparol at planting, and then we came back uh, with Enlist Duo two weeks ago. And this cotton is seven leaf right now and so the cotton would have been around three to four leaf when we sprayed the Enlist Duo. Uh, this is Enlist cotton, obviously, because it's not dead. And so uh, we, the Enlist cotton system gives us a tremendous amount of flexibility in that we have two key ingredients that still control Palmer amaranth or Palmer pigweed over the top or post, and that's the Enlist, Enlist One or Enlist Duo, and then also uh, Glufosinate or Liberty. And so I'm gonna show you some differences now between using one versus the other and then uh, mixing the two together. One reason that it's very important to include an at planting herbicide or herbicide combination such as cotteran and caparol is we reduce the overall numbers that we have to deal with once the crop emerges. And so as you can tell between this plot and the untreated, there's a lot less weeds that we had to deal with with a post-emerge application. We came in here with Enlist One plus sequence. So a quart of Enlist One plus 40 ounces of sequence. Sequence is Roundup plus uh, Metolachlor. And so these are glyphosate resistant pigweed. So what we really have working on these pigweed is the Enlist or the 2,4-D choline portion of that herbicide. And some were a little large, but we were able to go ahead and kill. Here's a broadleaf signal grass that we were able to kill with the Roundup. And here's another pigweed that was small enough, we killed it. And then we come down here, we have some pigweed that were larger at time of application. And what we see with uh, in the Enlist system or Enlist 1 from time to time is once the pigweeds get above six, seven inches, uh, one application generally will beat it up and twist it up, but they will still be alive. And so that's one thing that's really important regardless of the system that we're using from a herbicide standpoint. Timeliness of application is crucial you know, pigweed bigger than five, especially six inches, is gonna be hard to kill uh, regardless of our technology system. The last uh, herbicide treatment we looked at was Enlist One at a quart uh, plus sequence. And this one, uh, the difference in this one is it's gonna be Enlist One at a quart plus Liberty at a quart. So again, in the Enlist system, we have the flexibility to use both Liberty and Enlist One in a tank mix, and both of those have activity on pigweed. The Enlist cotton system and list soybean system is the only technology where we can use two effective herbicide modes of action on our resistant Palmer amaranth population. 
And so what that looks like as we look down through here is in general, not every time, but we get a increase in activity because we mix those two together on Palmer amaranth, especially if they're small. Now, sometimes we're gonna miss one here or there and we'll just take a look and see what that looks like. If you remember in the endless system, uh, we had several larger pigweed that were left. Uh, we still have some large pigweed and it'll probably take two applications, but they look uh, more injured anyway in the uh, system where we tank mix glufosinate and enlist one. And there are overall less probably plants that are still alive in this particular plot. This pigweed here was probably about eight inches when we made the application, six to eight inches. So for it being that big, did a pretty good job. Again, we'll probably have to come back again. It's two weeks after the application. It doesn't look as healthy as the pigweed we looked at with Enlist by itself. Uh, we'll just have to monitor it and see what happens. Our next herbicide treatment we want to look at, I want to show you a comparison of a single product at planting versus two. The last two plots or treatments that we looked at, herbicide treatments, uh, included cotteran and caparol mixture at planting. This particular plot is cotteran by itself. And if you just look, we talked about pigweed control being a numbers game. And so when I mix two products, in general, I have less pigweed to deal with with my post-emergence application than if I just use one product. And if we look down through here, you can see the pigweed that remain. Now, two weeks ago, we sprayed this with Enlist Duo. Uh, we did not include glufosinate and we have several survivors, and they're surviving because they were too large at the time of application, and that goes back to the effectiveness of our pre-emerge herbicide. So the cotteran and caparol mixture uh, in this particular experiment looks better than the cotteran by itself. And so we're killing smaller ones. Okay, smaller ones are dead. The bigger ones, six to eight inches, are gonna survive. So we've got dead and alive pigweed through the plot based on size. That's uh, Enlist Duo by itself, and now we're going to look at a glufosinate by itself or a Liberty by itself under the same scenario. The next plot we're going to look at is uh, going out with glufosinate or Liberty by itself in our first post application. The last one we talked about how Enlist Duo was not very effective on pigweed much larger than five or six inches. It's the same story with Liberty. Uh, we look down through this plot. Uh, we have uh, some weeds that are left. Had something digging out here too, I just noticed that. But uh, some of these pigweed that were larger, we're not gonna kill with glufosinate. Glufosinate's a uh, finicky herbicide anyway. Uh, we need to spray it during banking hours or from nine to five to do our best job. Uh, but when the pigweed has any size to it at all, five, six inches uh, becomes a lot less effective uh, as a standalone program by itself. Now, our general recommendation when we're doing uh, glufosinate only applications is to follow it up in, in 10 to 14 days with a second application. Uh, these plots will receive a second application this week. But again, this pigweed's gonna be too hard uh, to kill probably with that single application. And if we go back to our uh, second plot that we looked at, uh, where we tank mix the Enlist One and the glufosinate, that's been the best program so far that we've looked at uh, following our Cotter and Caparol application up front. We always recommend a residual group 15 herbicide uh, going in our tank in our early post and mid post applications over the top of cotton. Uh, I want to show you the difference right now between Esmetolachlor or Dual Magnum and uh, Warrant. So get a lot of questions, which one should I go with, Dual or Warrant? Uh, we do have some pigweed populations in the state of Arkansas, especially in northeast Arkansas, that are tolerant to some of our group 15s, including dual and warrant, uh, but this population is not. And so we can get a good representation of, of what these look like in an early post setting. These were put out uh, about 21 days ago, and so we can kind of see what's breaking where. And so if we look, this first plot is a, uh, was, Espatolachlor mixed in with the, the Liberty or glufosinate. And you can see that uh, we have several pigweeds germinating, but very little grass. Okay, our counterparts in Tennessee 
across the river in Tennessee have glyphosate resistant barnyard grass. Uh, so it's important when we're not, or when we're in a rotation or when we're using something that we uh, want to use for grass control, or we know we have a grass problem, which residual works better for grass? Espatola chlor, we've got pigweeds coming up, not near as much grass. All right, this next plot is warrant. The first thing to me that generally breaks in, in the warrant plots is the grass. And so if we need a residual to help us on broadleaf signal grass, help us on barnyard grass, usually Esmatola Chlor is one of the best group 15s for that. Uh, we moved to warrant. We've got pigweeds that may have broke a little bit earlier than they did in the Esmatola Chlor plot or the dual magnum plot, but we also have pretty large grass that, and grass is, again is usually what breaks first uh, in warrant. So that's Usually what I see as far as the residual activity difference between dual magnum and warrant residual herbicide, early post. I get a lot of questions on why we can't use Zidua, one of our group 15 herbicides, over the top of cotton in season. In these particular plots, again, this is our enlist cotton. Uh, we use Zidua over the top at the cotyledon stage uh, to see if we had some tolerance there. And these four rows right here are what were sprayed, one, two, three, four. And as you can see, looking down that plot, up to the next plot, uh, these are a lot more stunted. We've got a lot less leaf area. Uh, they're set back, they're set behind a little bit. Um, so again, perfect growing conditions. We may recover from this, but this is the reason that Zidua does not have a label over the top. And it's due to uh, tolerance, the cotton being able to tolerance, tolerate the Zidua herbicide. Thank you for joining me today and listening to a little bit about cotton weed control and the importance of early season uh, cotton weed control. So as I've evaluated these, these treatments or these herbicide trials uh, today, uh, one thing sticks out and it's something that we've seen for the last three years. A mixture of two residual herbicides up front is better than one, regardless of what type of resistance you may have on your farm. So the Cotteran at a pint, Caparol at a pint, if you have a heavier soil, you might can go a, a pint and a half of each. Uh, up front is going to buy you more time to come back uh, to make that timely post application. The second thing is in the enlist system, it gives you good flexibility uh, to come in. You can spray enlist one, you can spray glufosinate, or you can combine them. And that's two modes of action over the top of glyphosate resistant Palmer amaranth or PPO resistant Palmer amaranth, which, whichever population you have. And so that gives us good flexibility depending on uh, what's next to us in the field, and also based on the weed spectrum that we have. The other thing that we looked at is the importance of including a group 15 residual in those early post applications. We've, we've uh, recommended for the last 10 years now, since glyphosate resistance first became a, a big issue, uh, to come in with those group 15 herbicides. In some areas of the state, uh, outlook is going to work better than warrant or dual magnum because we have some tolerance to dual magnum uh, and to warrant in northeast Arkansas. So it just depends on the population you're dealing with. Here they look uh, fairly equal, especially after 14 days. So keep in mind residuals, 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 and uh, having the flexibility for two effective modes of action over the top of cotton uh, for the season is very important for pigweed management.